Firestone and welcome along to Radio Cavell. First of all, congratulations on a very, very interesting and entertaining concert performance here tonight. Have yeah. you enjoyed yourself? Listen Ian, uh, this is what I've been trying to tell the people. I've had a boom, it's been absolutely fantastic tonight. I mean, everything is good here. The sound is good, um, and the people were just absolutely fantastic. Mm. I mean, as I said to them, they were the icing on the cake today. It was just absolutely fantastic. But can I just interrupt into that, mm. rather than talk about myself? Because I might not get the chance, you see, during the course of this interview, and wish all of your patients the most incredible Christmas and a very, very happy New Year. That's very nice. Thank you very much. I'm sure they will enjoy some of the music coming up during tonight's programme. Uh -huh. So, that was <laughs> organised. Have you got any particular plans for Christmas at all? Christmas a festive season? Christmas to me is a, one of those times when you're at home. Christmas has always been a home time to me. So it's always a very quiet time, strangely enough. Everybody seems to think I go to roaring rave up parties <laughs> and all that sort of thing, which I don't. As a matter of fact, Christmas Day we always spend just my wife and I and and my wife's mother. And it's just the three of us and we just have it very, very quiet. And eat eat yourself silly. This it's the day I forget it's the day I always forget about my diets anyway. But it's normally always quiet. And then normally after Christmas we might go to a couple of parties or have some people round. But Christmas Day itself is always a very, very quiet, private thing to me. It's always, you know, I, mean, I love it. It's yeah. great. Don't we all? That's yeah. it. Take you back a few years, Harry. How did it all start for you? How did you first come into the popular organ world? Oh, the, the organ world. You see, before I, I started playing the electronic organ, I was a piano player. And I was, at that time, we're talking now about, what, late 50s. You wasn't here then, were you? Here, no, you no, wasn't here, was wasn't you? even thought of. No, there you go, you see. <laughs> well, in the late 50s, um, I was playing piano in bands. Mm -hmm. and I was working for Cyril Stapleton for a time. I did some work with the squadroneers. Um, it, it, that was the type of thing that I was doing. And it was very strange that a lot of pally job, you know, the, the, where people used to go to dance, you, you still know about the word pally. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, well, I yes. don't know whether you young people know about those names <laughs> or not, you see. Um, it was getting a bit away from the sort of big band era at that time. We're talking now about the, maybe about 1960. And most bands were now having to play a lot of pop music, mm, yeah. you know, to keep, you know, to keep punters coming to the ballroom. And so you're doing a lot of stuff from the top 20, etc. And because a lot of these records at that time had organs on, you'd hear them. And um, the band I was with at that time was a, a guy called Johnny Howard. And he said he thought I ought to get an organ. And it all started from there. Um, I, th I thought it was a bit of a drag at first, you know, to <laughs> sort of arrive with this electronic organ. But then I started to um, take it home, I used to practice, and I realised it was a complete instrument in itself, you know, with the bass pedals and everything. It was a complete self-contained instrument. And it went from there. So really, it was as much an accident, almost, as anything, that I started to play organ. But I'm sure it was the organ that made it all marvellous for me. I mean, because um, I would never have made it on piano. Um, and it went on from there. I went freelance, I left the bands, and I got my own broadcasting series. And because it just kept on going on up and up from there. Mm. From about the mid-60s, it's been absolutely fantastic. As I said earlier on, you need a bit of luck. Yeah. You, you know, you do need a bit of luck. It doesn't matter how well you play, there are a lot of people in this country who can play as good as me, a lot better than me probably, but never had the luck to be in the right place at the right time to be asked to do a job, you know. Mm. So that's it. You did mention during tonight how you first got into the Michael Parkinson uh, television program. Mm. That was purely luck. Again, but that's it. And that is the that is the, the proof of it. Mm. I mean, you have to have the ability to hold the job. I mean, if you get the job, but I mean, you can say that about any job. I mean, it doesn't 
it does, doesn't apply to music. I mean, it applies to any job that anybody does. I mean, you can get a job. I mean, whether you're a motor fitter or whatever, you still have to be able to do the job when you've got it. And it's the same in music. But that is the, the, the crucial thing about it all, particularly in my work. You have to be in the right place at the right time when the job is going. Yeah. And you happen to come into a producer's mind or whatever, he thinks, oh, I need a certain type of music. Who do I know? Oh, Harry Stone is the person. And it might be just as lucky as that, you see. Mm. Well, well on, on tonight's programme, we will be playing one or two tracks from your latest LP, Harry, which is uh, on the uh, Elka E39 right, yeah. album. Mm. Why did you choose that relatively small organ at a relatively small price these days? Yeah, but it's a very comprehensive instrument. Don't be put off by the fact that it's small mm. and it's not a huge price. It really is a comprehensive instrument. Mm. I mean, the reason I did it, um, I, I went to the factory at Elka. Um, the reasons I went there are, are too complex at the moment. <laughs> I mean, because it involves a story about the Far East, etc. So I won't go into all of that. Um, but suffice to say, I, I had to go to the factory at Halstead in Essex one day. Um, we'd go along, we had lunch. Marcus Lunch, they looked after us so well, and they produced this evolution range of organs. Mm. And when I played the E39, they asked me what I thought of it, and I said, well, I think it's a fantastic little instrument. And they said, well, would I do an album on it? And I said, yeah, sure, if we can work the right deal. I mean, listen, it's still business, don't forget. Of course. I mean, of course. And I mean, having said that, I wouldn't play, I wouldn't use the instrument if it was no good. Mm. But I mean, now I enjoyed it, so it's now it was a question of a deal. We went ahead and uh, I arranged all the sort of recording dates at EMI at Abbey Road. You might handle all the pressing, etc., etc., and that's how it came into being. But it is a completely solo album. I mean, there's nobody else on it other than myself. No overdubbing, no trickery. That is purely just the organ and nothing else. That sounds like it's quite a novelty these days, particularly when one looks at organists such as Brian Sharp and all the others that do tend to mix various tracks in with one another. Yeah, well, they do that for a finished result. I mean, the, this Elka record, funnily enough, when it started, it wasn't meant to be a commercial album. It was meant to be just a promotion album to give away to illustrate the organ. Yeah. Then they decided, when they had the finished product in their hands, that perhaps they had a marketable commodity, so they decided to sell it. Um, so it went from there, really. OK, so we've looked at the past, the present, what about the future now, Harry? What lies ahead for you? Any ideas? I am one of, well, there's been a few ideas put about. I mean, obviously, I still do quite a bit of work. Um, I finish up the end of this week. Uh, I get to Sunday night, and that is my last work. Mm -hmm. Then until I then take all of Christmas off, always. And then go into the new year, and then my next assignment after that, I've got some writing to do. Um, I've got to write two books. These are music books of arrangements. And then immediately after that, that'll take up the first couple of weeks of January. Um, and then we're going to Paris. Um, I've got to do a couple of concerts in Paris. I think I've got to do something in Lyon. So I've got about three or four days in France, which I love anyway. No. I mean, the food is just... I, mean, <laughs> just I, I Actually, this is ever so funny, Ian, because I was just thinking to myself, saying that, what with Christmas, and then immediately, a few weeks after going to France, I, I, I think I'd better start getting some new clothes now. <laughs> oh, no, well, you use all the energy. No, no, you mean, no, listen, when you get to my age, it all goes on very, very easy, I tell you. It really does. <laughs> well, thanks for taking time off of a very busy, hectic schedule. I know you have to go back home tonight. 200 and... Listen, Ian, as I told you when I knew who you were, right, what you did, I think that you people, I, I said this to you earlier, I think you do a fantastic job. And I think that I'm sure that all of the patients at your hospital would give a vote of thanks to that as well. How, how much good do you do? 
and the time that you spend that, etc, etc. So what's two minutes of my time? You probably spend far more time than I do doing other things, you know. So there you are. I couldn't do it without you. Though. I thank you, <laughs> but you shouldn't thank me. No. With the greatest of respect, Harry, I wish you continued success for the future. Uh, I know many, many patients in the Oldham hospitals do appreciate all the work you do in the organ world. And uh, as I say, wish you continued success. Well, you, happy uh, Christmas. Yes, really. You would tell all those patients to get as well as they can, as quick as they can, and get themselves out and start playing organs themselves. That's it the, does the legs good, doesn't it? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Stone, and once again, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.